Before we begin, I have a new feature that I'm going to be trying out at the end of this video, so stick around for that. Now one station I've had a few requests to cover is Newbury Park, so giving the people what they want, here we go. Newbury Park is a station on the central line of the London Underground. It was first built in 1903 by the Great Eastern Railway as part of what was then known as the Fairlop Loop, but is now known as the Hainault Loop, not that it makes any difference. In 1947 it became part of the London Underground. Undoubtedly the most famous aspect of it, though, must be the bus shelter outside. Architecturally, the station is something of an oddity. It has the old Edwardian station building, like Barkingside, but also this very dynamic and exciting exterior. Ultimately, as with so much on the underground, it comes down to economics. In 1935, the New Works programme was proposed. Now, I've talked about this many times before, particularly in the context of the Central Line, but in short, it was a huge scheme to modernise the underground. The Fairlop Loop was a significant part of this. The train service at the time was considered inadequate. Incorporating it into the underground, giving residents a service directly to the city and the West End, was seen as a way to improve it and hopefully, finally, make it pay. No more would the line consist of Edwardian stations served by Edwardian trains. This would be an electric railway for the 20th century, with buildings to match. In 1937, London Transport set to work, designing the new and improved Fairlop Loop. Newbury Park was to be demolished and completely rebuilt. Not only would it get a snazzy new tube line, but it would also get a bus station built in. To make this a true transport hub and to further fulfil the demand for improved transport links in this part of London. The concept of a fully integrated transport system was a new one, but London Transport were determined to run with it. In 1939, they had to hold that thought, as the world was plunged into war. This was the Second World War, you might have heard of it. In 1945, London Transport were just champing at the bit to get their programme restarted, but now there was another problem. Money. There wasn't any. Like the rest of the country, the transport network had taken a heck of a beating, and there was only so much money to go round, what with rebuilding and all. So the New Works programme had to be scaled back. The takeover of the Fairlop Loop did happen, of course, as did electrification, but London Transport had to start asking themselves difficult questions like, do we really need a new Newbury Park station? So the plans for an exciting new fully integrated bus and tube station were pared down. The grand arched bus shelter designed by Oliver Hill was kept, along with a new station entrance. But the old buildings remained in service. Oliver Hill had an indirect connection to the underground already. He had worked on the British Pavilion at the 1937 Paris Exposition under Frank Pick. Pick was the general manager of London Transport and the man responsible for the network's design principles. The bus shelter seems to have been a pretty good call because in 1951 it won a Festival of Britain Architectural Award. The Festival of Britain was a morale-boosting exercise for Austerity Britain, celebrating the very best the nation had to offer, looking forward to a brighter future. Modern architecture was very much at the forefront of the organisers' minds, not least because bombing had seen to it that there was a powerful need for new buildings. Newbury Park isn't the only central line station to get the awards, there's another plaque at White City in the west. That's not the only recognition the shelter would get. It's now Grade 2 listed in recognition of its importance and innovation. Oliver Hill would lament that Hitler destroyed his career, which was never quite as successful after the war. That being said, the bus shelter must be one of the most recognisable structures on the London Underground, which certainly isn't short of acclaimed architecture. This barrel-vaulted shelter in concrete and copper really elevates Newbury Park from another suburban stop to something truly outstanding. Mr Hill has nothing to be ashamed of. 
All right, now as a new and experimental thing, I thought I'd steal an idea from a lot of other YouTubers and introduce a feature where I answer your frequently asked questions, probably over some B-roll footage. Today's question is, why aren't your videos longer? Well, a number of reasons, but the main one is that I don't like to pad my videos out unnecessarily. If I only have enough material for, say, a four-minute video, then I'll only make a four-minute video. I could go into more technical detail on each subject, say, but that might become boring and repetitive, particularly if, as I am at the moment, I'm covering several different stations that were built at around the same time in around the same place. There's also the question of my own time. I have a full-time job, and between writing, filming and editing, I don't get a lot of time to myself. The longer the video is, the less time I have. That's not to say that I'm opposed to making longer videos, it's just that I don't want to make them unless I can make them good, unless I can make them worth watching. That being said, I totally did just pad this video out with this question, so look at me being a hypocrite. Hello all, I hope you enjoyed this barrel vaulted tale from the tube. If you did, you may wish to click the like button. If you'd like more from the tube or on architecture, consider subscribing, there's always plenty more on the way. As I say, this is a station I've had a few requests for, and I can totally see why people wanted me to cover it. It's a really very exciting piece of architecture. I can't help but wonder what we might have got if it weren't for the budget cutbacks. What sort of station would we have ended up with? What sort of central line might we have ended up with? These are questions for the ages, and perhaps the comments section. As always, I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the modernist bus shelter to my Edwardian station. And I'll see you all again for another tale from the tube.